age or as your parents age or loved ones is that they get exploited financially. That can happen. So how do you protect yourself? Joining us this morning is Marshall Clay with the Welsh Group with some important information. Marshall, good to see you this morning. Hey, good to see you, Mike. We, we, we've got a lot to cover here, but obviously if you if you if you have aging parents, you can start to see signs of this, you know, forgetfulness and, uh, you know, maybe being uh, making impulsive purchases that, that are just really out of the ordinary for them. And that can make them vulnerable, correct? Yeah, exactly. I mean, in today's modern world, I think we're all open to some sort of financial exploitation. But I think as you age, particularly if there's some sort of cognitive decline, whether it be dementia or Alzheimer's, you become much more vulnerable um, to these potential threats. And so, you know, some of the main ones right now, you've got all these, you know, healthcare scams, email online scams that are out there, and they're really targeting, you know, the elderly because they're, 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 they're more vulnerable and in a, in a vulnerable state. So it's very important. Um, I tell people not only to know the signs, know the threats, but also build a, a trusted team around you. And that not only includes, you know, professionals, whether it be financial advisors or, or accountants or attorneys, but probably more importantly, and I'm sure your, your viewers may be shocked to find this out, that over a third of all financial exploitation is committed by family members and friends. Mm. And sometimes it's the threats that you don't really see right. um, that, are, that are the most dangerous. And so if you have third party caregivers, you know, the family members really need to vet them to make sure um, that they're on the up and up. And then obviously, um, if, if there's a if there's a weird family dynamic, uh, we oftentimes recommend people nominate trusted contact. And, and this trusted contact is not someone who's going to be executing or, or you know, making financial decisions on your behalf, but it's really kind of an accountability officer for those family members just to make sure you're not getting exploited by them as well. All right, so let, let's start talking about it. So let's lay out the plan now and, and what folks can do to avoid this financial abuse and exploitation. Build a plan. You talk about the trusted team. So what should that involve? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we work with a lot of, you know, elderly families. And I think one thing is just having someone who's constantly looking at the accounts to make sure that there's not random, you know, large purchases being made, things that are that are really outside of the normal course of business. You know, if you're if you're spending twenty thousand dollars online, I mean, that's a major red flag that, that that something potentially has gone awry. So having somebody who can look at those things on an ongoing basis and just hold people accountable is very important. But as I mentioned, you know, the caregivers and the family members, they're going to be the ones who are spending the most time around this particular elderly person. And they're the ones that are, you know, that are going to be most tempted potentially um, to misappropriate funds and do things like that. And so it's important to have those trusted contacts, maybe multiple family members that are involved um, in the process, just so everybody can trust everybody else and make sure that no one's being taken advantage of. And obviously we need to make these decisions when we're cohesive in our thoughts and, and, and before maybe things regress to the point that they can get bad. So uh, what about backup advisors? You know what I mean? Because you could have a caregiver and that now you need a backup because the, the second one in line might not be trusted. So what about getting attorneys involved and tax advisors involved as part of that team? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, a, a, a lot of people will, will give, you know, their trusted advisors the authority to maybe switch caregivers. And I mean, that's, that's somewhat rare, but oftentimes they do, um, they, they, they do allow their advisors to do that. And I think that's important. I think you hit on a very important point about starting early. Obviously, you, you don't want to wait until the cognitive de decline is there because yeah. it's harder for you to make those types of decisions and you're relying on third parties. So obviously starting early and trying to, you know, plan for the worst, obviously hope for the best. None of us hopes that we reach a state of cognitive decline, but unfortunately it's a, it's an increasing problem um, in the U.S. and one that you have to be aware of. All right, we're definitely a blueprint for folks to think about. Marshall Clay with the Wells Group, we do appreciate it this morning. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Bye. All right. All right, still ahead now, up next in the good